Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some fitness or nutrition myth, look at where that myth got started, and then why it's actually wrong based on the most recent scientific evidence. Um, you guys may notice I'm actually in a hotel in Orlando right now, um, so excuse the, the atypical background. This week, we're gonna be looking at the idea that there's a maximum amount of protein that you can absorb in one sitting. And what that number is will depend on who you ask, but usually it's something like 20 to 30 grams of protein. And the reasoning goes that because there's a limit on the amount of protein you can absorb, it's a good idea to space your meals out or space your protein out across five or six meals throughout the day. Because if you were to just lump it all in one or two meals, then a big chunk of that protein would be going to waste. So first, where did this myth come from? Um, well, the true myth is that only 20 to 30 grams of protein can be absorbed and the word absorb is the key player here, or the, the key error, because in reality, we have virtually an unlimited capacity to absorb amino acids from protein. According to a 2009 paper on digestion and absorption, virtually all ingested protein is absorbed by healthy humans. So the terminology is important here, and we're using absorption to simply refer to the passage of nutrients through the gut, and then through the intestinal wall, and into circulation in the blood. And absorption isn't the issue here. Uh, you could eat, say, 300 grams of protein and absorb all or nearly all of that just fine. Um, but I think that what people really mean when they ask this question is whether or not protein intakes over, say, 20 or 30 grams in a single meal is actually used to support muscle building. And I think that the literature actually doesn't have a perfectly clear answer on this question. Um, but there is a lot of data out there, and I think that it can give us a pretty good idea. Um, so let's go ahead and dig right in. So in 2015, Dr. Stu Phillips Research Group published a review article hinting at the existence of a so-called muscle full effect, which is the idea that with increasing protein doses, you'll eventually hit a ceiling, past which increasing protein further doesn't do anything extra for muscle protein synthesis. And this ceiling has been previously proposed in a pretty large body of literature to be roughly 20 grams. The first study to show this compared 20 grams of whole egg protein with 40 grams of whole egg protein following a leg workout. And they found no significant difference between the two groups suggesting that you get all the anabolic bang for your buck that you need with just 20 grams. Similar results were found in another study where 30 grams of beef protein was just as effective as 90 grams of beef protein at stimulating muscle protein synthesis. And still more research showed that protein consumed beyond 20 grams resulted in increased oxidation, meaning the amino acids were being burned off for energy and increased urea production further indicating that there is some sort of limit on the amount of protein that can be used for muscle protein synthesis in one sitting. Um, so, so far, based on this scan of the literature, it really seems to be the case that that upper ceiling of how much protein you can utilize in one meal uh, seems to be about 20 to 30 grams. Um, however, I think that in practice, it isn't really quite that simple uh, because how much protein you can use in a single meal depends on at least three factors. First of which is the size of the person. It seems to be the case that folks with more muscle tend to need more protein to max out the muscle protein synthetic response. So to account for this and general inter-individual variability, the Phillips review suggested 0.4 grams per kilogram or about 0.18 grams per pound as a reasonable upper limit. So for a 120 pound person, it would be about 22 grams, but for a 200 pound person, it'd be more like 36 grams. So for bigger guys, 20 to 30 grams may actually not be enough protein to fully max out that protein synthetic response. The amount of protein needed also depends on the amount of muscle mass being trained. In contrast to the earlier studies, a 2016 paper showed that 40 grams of whey protein was in fact better at increasing muscle protein synthesis than 20 grams. And because many of the earlier studies used lower body training only, and this study used a full body training routine, this led the authors to believe that when you activate more muscle mass in a workout, you require more protein to max out the protein synthetic response. A third thing that definitely seems to drive the number up is age. And as we get older, a well-established phenomenon known as anabolic resistance occurs. And this basically means that you need more protein to get the same muscle protein synthetic response. So with these factors in mind, the ceiling is no longer looking quite as strict at the 20 or 30 gram mark. And I think some individuals, especially those who are older, um, who have larger muscle masses, and perhaps who do full body training, could easily stand to benefit from say 40 or even 50, or perhaps more grams of protein 
in a single sitting. But this answer still doesn't seem to satisfy many experts in the field. Um, there seems to be something just wrong with the idea that if you ate, say, 80 grams of protein in a single meal, that at least half of that would be going to waste when it comes to building muscle. And I think a big part of this intuition comes from the idea that most of the research we've been looking at so far is based on acute measures of muscle protein synthesis, not long-term trials invest investigating full-scale muscle hypertrophy. So some would argue it's just a little too speculative to make any strong conclusions about a true protein ceiling. And I think a lot of this pushback comes from the intermittent fasting community, where it's common to see folks eat huge boluses of protein, say 75 or 100 grams of protein, uh, spaced across one to two meals in a say four to eight hour eating window. And I will admit that in the real world, this feeding schedule doesn't really seem to affect their ability to add lean mass in any way. And I think that there's some literature to support this idea as well. One intermittent fasting study from Soders and colleagues found that consuming on average 101 grams of protein in one four hour eating window versus a more conventional spread out pattern resulted in no differences in lean mass preservation between the groups. And another paper found that consuming one meal per day with roughly 86 grams of protein actually showed improvements in body composition when compared to that protein being spaced out more evenly across three meals. I think a few obvious limitations with this research are the use of bioelectrical impedance, which is pretty unreliable, and the fact that total daily protein intake was pretty low which I think draws into question its applicability in the real world. So coming full circle on this, I don't think we have a perfectly clear answer on how many grams of protein the body can use uh, for building muscle in a single meal. We do know that we have a virtually unlimited capacity to absorb amino acids from protein. How much of that is actually utilized in terms of building new muscle uh, will depend on a whole bunch of factors, not limited to your age, the amount of muscle mass that you're exercising, um, your actual body size, and also really importantly, the quality of that protein. Um, so for something a little bit more tangible, uh, here's my personal take on this after reading through all this literature. Um, I think it's clear that the most important factor when it comes to building muscle, uh, apart from resistance training, is total daily protein intake. And I think most of the experts on this issue would agree. Um, and even though they may disagree about exactly how much protein you need, I think that one gram per pound for relatively lean individuals is plenty, meaning that's more than enough. And next, I think assuming your protein is of a sufficient enough quality, uh, it may be a good idea to space that protein out somewhat evenly across say four to five meals. Um, and I think that this is probably slightly more optimal than say bolusing it all in one or two huge protein doses. Um, but if you are someone who does follow intermittent fasting, I wouldn't say that just because you do skew your protein intake to be mostly consumed in one or two massive feedings, um, I wouldn't say that most of that protein is going to waste. And this is just based on my observations in the field with people who practice intermittent fasting and some of this intermittent fasting research. Um, and I think that uh, there's a few reasonable explanations for this. It's possible that in the case of mixed meals, where you have a ton of calories coming in from multiple different sources with lots of different macronutrients, um, digestion and absorption is gonna be slowed to a great degree anyway. And it seems perfectly plausible that those extra amino acids that may not necessarily be contributing to muscle protein synthesis may have a positive effect on limiting muscle protein breakdown. Um, but again, ultimately, I think it comes back to your goals. Um, if you're someone who's trying to get every morsel of muscle that you possibly can, uh, it may be more optimal for you to space out your protein across, say, four or five meals with maybe 30 to 40 grams of protein in each meal. Uh, but if you're someone who is just looking to you know, improve your general shape and size, then I think that you should focus more so on hitting your total daily protein intake and whatever protein scheduling it is that allows you to hit that best is what you should go with. Okay, so to wrap it up, uh, the real myth here is that you can only absorb 30 grams of protein in one sitting. Um, in reality, you can absorb at least 10 times that amount, no problem. But the real question is whether or not you can use that much protein in one sitting. And I think that looking at the literature, we just don't really have a clear answer on this. I think that if I were to look at just muscle protein synthesis, something around 30 to 40 grams is probably where you start to see that ceiling or that muscle full effect. However, looking at the intermittent fasting literature, uh, it could be the case that those extra amino acids that aren't contributing to protein synthesis are limiting muscle protein breakdown. And I think that the body is smart in that way. And I think that it can find a way to use that extra protein 
provided total daily protein targets are being hit. All right, so guys, that's gonna conclude this week's Myth Bust Monday, another issue that isn't quite black and white, um, but I think that there's a lot of nuance and a lot of complexity to this issue. Um, so I hope that you guys really found it informative. And before we go, I really want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Um, one of the questions I get asked all the time is what books do I read? And uh, with all the traveling we do and uh, just constantly being on the go and with how busy I am, um, it's not always easy to read books in print form. Um, so I will use audiobooks to help get uh, more of my reading in. And one book I'd like to really recommend to you guys is The Gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee. And this audiobook is actually read by Siddhartha himself and it comes highly recommended. It's a really good survey of all that we know basically on human genetics, uh, starting all the way back from Mendel all the way up to our, our current understanding of genetics. And if you guys would like to try out Audible, um, you can go to audible.com forward slash Jeff Nippard, or if you text Jeff Nippard to 500 500, and you can get a free 30 day trial and a free audiobook of your choice. Personally been using Audible for three or four years, and I think it's a great service. If you guys would like to check it out, I'll have the first link down there in the description. You can get started on your free trial today. Uh, so thank you so much Audible for sponsoring this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you happen to be new. And I will see you guys all here next Monday.